Welcome everyone, meet the maker, I'm Yvonne. Today I will show you how I made this bag. This is a windmill bag. It's a tiny bit different than the ones I already made because it's only got two points. And um, that's because I changed the length of two of the, the wings. So um, two wings are longer and two wings are shorter. And then this is what happens. I'll explain it all in the pattern. Um, this is made up with in the baby tiles, that's a pattern that I designed. And you can find the tutorial for that in my book is home too. I didn't finish the bag yet, not with a real strap. So this is just on here with a stitch marker, just for show. Um, I will be adding a strap to this bag and it will be a strap like this. Um, here you can see the windmill bag with four points, by the way. So I made two straps on this little bag. And on this bigger bag, I will only need to make one strap. Um, so that will be in the next tutorial. In this tutorial, I will just show you how this bag is constructed, how you put it all together, um, and how to do the finishing touches like this button and the loop. But you don't have to. If you just like two cords to tie it closed and you have the cords hanging here with something cute on it, that's fine too. So, um, and this bag can be made with any square, any granny square. Um, and you'll need about 18. Well, not about, you'll, you'll need 18 to make it like this. Um, so let's get going. Oh, wait, I forgot to show you. The bottom of the bag is rather square. So that's, this one's looking like this. And the small bag shows off the windmill construction better because it's made up of these strips. So I just wanted to show you that. And now I'll show you how to make this. Have fun. This tutorial started with me making a windmill bag with these in the baler tiles. And I was starting to make a bag with uh, 12 tiles and I had four wings of three tiles each and then when the bag was finished I frogged it all and I made six extra tiles as you see here and now we have four wings and two wings are longer the left and the right wing are longer so we have two wings with four tiles each and two wings with five tiles each. And this is going to uh, get you a different type of bag, but it's still going to be a, a windmill bag, just slightly different. So I'll show you how we are going to complete that. Now let's move into these two wings here. As you see, this wing has five tiles and that wing has four tiles. And we are going to crochet these two wings together. They're going to be moved together. And there will be a flat top here. And they're going to be uh, zipper stitched together along this side, down to here. Then you will be crossing over at the bottom of the bag to the other side. And then you will be at the other end of the bag, where again, there are four tiles here and five tiles there. And those two are going to be moved together and the zipper seam will continue here down this side and this two will end in a flat side. I'm working on the floor here because this doesn't fit on my desk so I hope this is clear. So uh, what I'm going to start first is the zipper seam starting there down this side over the bottom these four here are going to be the bottom and then up this side and we'll have two flat sides i have zipper stitched this part of the two wings together and um, if you're not familiar with the zipper stitch i suggest to watch my other tutorial about the zipper stitch and now i just want to show you how to go about these points here. So when you're crossing over the zipper stitch of um, these sections. 
um, to get it as neat as this. We're gonna show. I'm gonna show you that one there. So now I'll show you how to work a zipper seam over these two zipper seams here. Um, we have one more chain stitch to connect on these two tiles. Just pulling through the loop there. And then these zipper seams. Insert your hook down the middle of this one, the zipper seam, and down the middle of that zipper seam. And just pull up the loop and it's done. And you can just continue on the next set of tiles, connecting those. And the connection will be really neat. I have one more difficult point coming up. That's the point here where you go around the corner of this square and you work down the bottom of the bag. So I'll show you that too. I'm trying to get the whole picture in there for you. These two wings have just been connected with the zipper seam down to the bottom of the bag here. And now I'm crossing over to the to the bottom. So this tile is going to be worked on this side and on this side. The side being the side of the bag and the side being the, the bottom of the bag. And we are going to work this corner here and I'll show you how that is done. It's quite simple. And in this corner here, I suggest to insert your hook in that zipper stitch in the one loop of the big zipper stitch in the back loop of the chain of the next tile and in the back loop of the chain of this tile and pull up your yarn and you will have a neat connection there so then you can continue with the zipper stitch um, at the bottom of the bag and you will be connecting these two tiles and I'll show you um, what you do here at this middle point at the bottom. What you need to take care of during this zipper seam is that you make sure that these lines are continuous so that the stitches are matching up properly and if there is a little problem like I have now so I have two four six eight loops here and only seven loops there to the end and I don't, I don't feel like frogging. Then just insert the hook, the hook in two loops on this side, and one loop on that side, and you will be okay. And that's a and that's a neat and quick fix. Fix. Uh, just don't pull it too tight. So now you can continue with your slip stitching, zipper stitching to the end. Make sure you grab the whole yarn and not half the yarn like I did here. So the whole yarn. And then at the end of this part, at the bottom of the bag, you are going to cross over to the next two squares, also at the bottom of the bag. And before you cross over, we're almost there before you cross over so this is the last one chain here and a chain there connecting them in the back loops so this part is done and now we're going to hop over to these two and before you hop over that's the third time i said it chain one and then you can continue um, connecting these squares at the bottom too. So and that's how you continue. This is where I am at now. So I have connected these two wings down the side, down the bottom, and I am at this corner again, which I will show you in a minute. And after that, we are going to connect these two wings. And well, you know how that works. So the only thing I'm going to show you now is how to go around this corner here. Working around this corner, so we are going to go from that side of this tile to that side of the tile. Insert the hook in the chain space there 
and in the chain space there that's the last stitch at the bottom and also in the middle of this zipper stitch here and pull the yarn up and out through all those loops and you'll be home free we can continue along the next side so the next stitch will be the chain stitch on this side and the chain stitch on that side those are connected in the back loops and we can continue the whole zipper up those up this side here and the corner will be nice and neat see so when i've done this long side here i'll get back to you before i continue i'd like to show you what the bag is going to look like so the bag is going to have two pointed parts only and the other little windmill bag that i made before hang on there you are has four points see four of those points and now we only have two points and that's because we started with different lengths of um, wings on the on the windmill um, I still have to do this seam here uh, across the bottom and up the other side um, so I was just wanting to show you how this bag is going to look it's going to look a little bit different than this one but they are both windmill bags and also if I start on this side um, let me say it differently. I want to close the bag on this at this lower point with a loop and a button. And so I need to choose which side I'm going to have the button before I start the seam. So I'm going to have the button on this side, I think. So if I flip it over. Well, it will be better here even because it will be about a bit the same color as this orange here. So I'm going to leave it on this side. So I will start the seam, the zipper seam on this side, and I'll be folding this open in a minute. It's just, I'm just keeping it together with all these stitch markers so that we can see the shape. And I'm going to start the seam on this side. And then when I end this whole long seam, when I end at the back here, I'm going to make the loop um, to close over the button. I'm going to make that in one go. So that will save you some yarn ends. Um, I'm going to fold it all open now again. Um, so now you know what we're work working towards too. And the button is going to be here. And this is the bag without all the stitch markers. I just left one stitch marker in here. That's where I'm going to have the button. And this is also going to be the side where I'm going to start the last zipper seam and we need to attach these sides so this is going to be attached to there and you are going to have two squares unattached there so move this over there and that is where you're going to start the zipper seam and just take it square by square and then along the bottom i've shown you all the difficult parts and i'll get back when i have a bit more done here so we start here this bag is far from looking like a bag but we're almost there i'm working at the bottom of the bag now these four tiles are the bottom and what is another point of attention you're working with the yarn at the back of your work and that is all fine and nothing is in your way until you reach this point here and so make sure your yarn goes to the back there just if it's not there yet put it back there so that you will be able to make the slip stitch before you go over to these two squares that you make the slip stitch the chain stitch excuse me so you're going to make a chain stitch over this chain stitch here and you need to have your yarn at the back so make sure you can still stick it to the back while this is open enough 
and I'll just continue with this road crash here. I have arrived at the end of that second long seam coming from that side um, to make a neat connection here. I'm just going to insert the hook in one loop of this chain here, one loop of that zipper and one loop of that chain there and pull the yarn through so then all these parts will be connected very neatly and as i said before the button is going to be on the opposite side so what i'm going to do now is chain 30 um, to make a loop here i'm going to make uh, make that loop first and then i'll get back to you i've chained 30 and why did i chain 30 because 30 is what will fit over this button which will be on the other side of the bag so it will also have to fit over a full bag and that will fit and what i'll do now is slip stitch back along that chain and i'll start the slip slit slip stitch in the third chain from the hook and i'm gonna um, just attach a slit a, loop, a stitch marker here because um, my experience is that i can't find that space anymore so slip stitch back to there I've slip stitched back all the way to that first chain stitch there and what I'm going to do now I'm going to continue with the same yarn with the same color insert your hook in that skipped space there so now we can remove the stitch marker and what I'm going to do now is single crochet in the back loop of all these stitches along the top so I'm going to single crochet in all these stitches, but before I single crochet, I'm going to slip stitch this loop to that chain stitch there. So, so this is the loop. And when we end the bag, when we finish, when we finish the round of single crochet around the top, I will end with another stitch here. So that will be neat. So for now, just single crochet one stitch in each stitch along the top of this bag in the back loop only and um, also in the zipper seam stitches one single crochet in each zipper seam stitch so if you come across the zipper seam stitch here insert your hook in the middle and single crochet once and at the top there will be two chains single crochet in the back loop of the chain stitches and no chain stitches in between and i will get back to you when i'm down here on the other side and uh, why i'm doing this is because all these tiles are bordered by the green we've we've used green to connect all the tiles so it's i think it's nice to have the same color green around the top as well so that's why i'm doing this and i think it looks neat and also just using the back loop because we use the back loop here as well so just to get the same look this is the bag as it is now i am doing the single crochet in the back loop only along this top side here i've done this pointed part is already and i'm down at the bottom here this is where the button is going to be and the loop to close over the button is at the back there so the button will be here and i'll just show you how i'm going to go through this corner to work through this corner i'm going to single crochet three together insert the hook in the back loop of that chain there insert the hook in the back loop of that stitch there and pick up a loop and insert the hook in the back loop of the chain there and pick up a loop and then pull through and then you will have a strong connection in this corner here and now you can just continue with the single crochet in the back loop it's okay to skip this little one here um, and you will have a neat corner there so single crochet in the back loop only of all the stitches till we get to that 
that loop that we made to close over the button and I'll show you how to work away that neatly. This is looking more and more like a crash here. The tutorial on how to make this two-pointed windmill bag is almost finished. We have one last bit to do. This is the final um, few stitches that we're going to do here um, to make this neat. So I'll show you that in a minute and then the construction of the two-pointed windmill bag will be ready and I will show you in another tutorial how to make uh, a handle such as these. Making the last single crochet in the chain stitch down there and then to get this loop closed in neatly I'm going to make a back post single crochet around it and close it in tight. So then that will be in there nice and neat. Then you can just slip stitch up these stitches a bit more to get that um, a bit stronger, secure it a bit stronger. You can cut the yarn and pull it up and out and work away all yarn ends. And then the bag, the windmill, the two pointed windmill bag is as ready as it can be for now. Um, I'll be adding the handles in the next tutorial and I'll show you how that is done. You can add any kind of handle you like. If you like a leather handle, you can add anything you like. So don't wait for me for the tutorial. Do as you please. And you don't have to do a loop like this either. If you don't need a, um, a closure, you can skip that. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you back. Have a great day.